When others held their bodies rigid and upright, Tyler Cranston was bold enough to wave his arms overhead. He was distinctive, ostentatious, dramatic, and he threw out the skating rule book. I was a very rare species in that particular world at that particular time. Fast forward to 1997. Cranston's been out of the competitive skating spotlight now for years, but when he takes to the ice, as he did at this gathering to launch a book of his memoirs, he is hoping to recapture some of the glory that was his, hoping that his once flamboyant style, the style that changed the way skaters skate, can still enthrall. But at 48, Cranston is less confident. Growing old is a very ugly joke. <laughs> um, and people that say it's wonderful to be old, it's ridiculous to say that. Outspoken, controversial, both on and off the ice, nothing's changed. 20 years later, he still speaks his mind, still says what he thinks. I made a point, which I think um, over the years was fueled by paranoia and inferiority or insecurity. So you overcompensate by being an arrogant pig Skating commentator Debbie Wilkes offers this well, view. He's, he's a real uh, paradox in personalities because he's either so entirely full of himself or so completely down on himself that you, you kind of rock in this tidal wave of emotion that he has concerning uh, his own personality and his own capabilities. Cranston insists the years have mellowed him somewhat, but he also says life out of the skating spotlight hasn't been easy. Cranston divides his time between this studio in Toronto and a home in Mexico. He says he lives on the money he makes from selling his paintings, something he's done since he was very young. It paid for his skating career. Although I have lived a turbulent, like topsy-turvy, like where's the next meal coming from kind of life, um, it has been a very textured, very creative life. I've always lived far beyond my means and have suffocated in luxury even though you know I can't afford a cup of coffee. And if Cranston likes to paint a picture of the starving artist, he also says it's been difficult adjusting to life without the constant spotlight. Fame is a terrible drug that one can become addicted to. And I've had a horrible 15-year period of struggling with this invisible adversary, which was skating. And because he's still struggling, he says, he hates it when people ask, whatever happened to Taller Cranston? Taller is kind of like the Madonna of figure skating. He, he constantly reinvents himself, always to promote the sort of Taller Cranston legend. And so he has written this book of memoirs, some say in an attempt to regain some notoriety. It's not a tell-all book. It's absurd to say that. In any way, if I told all, I would be arrested and probably thrown in jail or something. And so, whatever did happen to Taller Cranston, he still skates, still makes occasional appearances still does his trademark moves, still has a huge following, and still says what he thinks about the skating world that made him famous. Right now, skating to me is the bar of the world. There isn't anybody out there that is really like changing the sport. How would you change it? Well, whatever Elvis and Todd and Alexi are doing, I would be the complete opposite. Quintessential Cranston, after all.